Okay, take a deep breath. Push it again. I'm pushing really hard. How come the okay. baby's not coming? This distressed woman in labor is actually Montefiore Health System obstetrician Dr. Dina Goffman conducting a mock emergency delivery training. Call for help, please. Second attending, uh, anesthesia, pediatrics. It's just one part of a comprehensive Montefiore Einstein OBGYN training program that uses childbirth simulators to train its most experienced physicians down to Einstein third year medical students before they start their clinical rotations. And don't drop them, they're slippery. It's amazing to think about being part of a, such a, a natural process of bringing life into the world. It's also scary thinking about hurting the baby and wanting to know you're doing it right so that um, you're guiding this process and only helping. Our department became involved in simulation in obstetrics relatively early on um, in the field. Probably about 10 years ago, we started um, small with a simulator and started working with our attendings and residents on some obstetric skills and obstetric emergencies. We've built the program gradually over time into a very robust, active simulation training program. The Montefiore Einstein Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology and Women's Health is leading a program to train experienced physicians at Montefiore as well as those in the Mount Sinai Health System and Maimonides Medical Center. They're all part of a multi-center collaborative risk management company that proactively works to improve patient outcomes. Congratulations. Independent medical centers working together might seem like an odd concept, Keep it arched. But it makes perfect sense to these providers. Well, I think in general, unlike maybe any other uh, competitive fields, medicine is promotion of health and uh, we teach each other and it's all about the patient. One pull is equal to three pushes. So one contraction, three pushes is one pull. One pull, right. You don't see progress after three pulls, you, get, you abandon it. One can always hone one's skills and get better. Uh, and in fact, if you really think about these emergencies, they don't happen daily. So with any surgical procedure uh, that's not done daily, uh, you need to keep your skills sharp. This is not easy, guys. There are many different care providers here with us today, and each of us has a slightly different bias, slightly different technique, and we learn from each other. The learning never stops. This particular training is part of a research study that will measure the effectiveness of simulation training on the technical skills of physicians and improved health outcomes of mothers and babies. But the collaborative also conducts multidisciplinary training to improve communication among all members of the delivery team. Okay, she's got no pressure, guys. It can get very hectic. We have two patients, mother and baby, nurses, attending physicians, resident physicians, pediatricians, anesthesiologists, and we need everyone to be able to quickly communicate with each other. Dr. Goffman, a former Einstein medical student, wondered if students could also benefit from this type of program. She conducted a randomized trial which showed that medical students exposed to simulation training improved in both confidence and participation in actual deliveries. Pelvic exams and breast exams are going to be in room 22 and suturing and knot tying is going to be in room 21. Now, in a program run by Dr. Stacy Pollock, you're going to take your speculum. Every Einstein third year medical student gets simulation training before going to the OBGYN ward. Are you nervous? Um, depends on, I guess, how much I would have to do. Just observing, I wouldn't be nervous. But if they actually asked me to go and do something or help out in a significant way, I might be a little bit more nervous. Using the speculum, it's kind of scary. Like, so many moving parts. I'm happy that we're doing it here and not with actual patients because uh, it gives me a chance to learn the right way to do it. Then it's always good if you're examining one breast to cover up on the other side so that the patient feels comfortable. Can you see the cervix? Yes. Okay. Then clip it. With students, when they enter OBGYN, they're pretty nervous. I mean, it's a very intimate field. We're dealing with the most private parts of our bodies, right? Um, and so we want the students to be comfortable when they get to the wards, because we need to be comfortable for our patients to be comfortable. Feel for a cord? Yeah. Oh, I don't feel a cord. Good, so what are you gonna do? In addition to training in labor and delivery, students learn how to do pelvic exams and outpatient procedures, as well as basic suturing and laparoscopy techniques. You watch them over the course of the day, becoming more comfortable, interacting with each other, learning, and really enjoying themselves. And then you discard this, and 
then I take this off to the laboratory. Laboratory. <laughs> and I think certainly being able to participate in small group education with faculty makes us real people and approachable, and it lets them know that we care about their learning. I, I finally feel like I understand now how to do the bimanual exam and feel the uterus the right way. And I'm looking forward to doing that in real life. Um, I think that this will be helpful that we had the chance to at least um, get a simulation of what it would be like, but I also know that you can't really compare to the real thing and a real person and the screaming and the chaos in the room. I love my job. Um, I love the balance of clinical care, actually taking care of patients. I love the fact that it's in a place where I'm constantly surrounded by people who want to learn, and that really ranges from students all the way up through experienced attendings who continue to seek opportunities to learn, and it's exciting to be in a place where that type of interest is fostered. I think I'm ready to keep learning at my rotation, which is what it's all about, so yeah, I'm ready to start seeing it in real life. The best part of my job is working with the students. They're fabulous. I feel like I have a unique opportunity to mentor them, to excite people about what I'm excited about and passionate about. Yeah. And what my motto always is, I always tell my students, you need to pay it forward. If somebody has helped you, your job is now to help someone else. So, you know, if we could just pass on that legacy here, I think we've done our job.